I mean, how are you? Fucking terrible, man. I was in the worst pain of my life because I never broke a, um, a lumbar uh, vertebrae before and it freaking hurts and everyone's refusing to treat me. So here I am almost two weeks later and it's way worse. And now I got a shoulder injury and now my chronic arthritic knee that I get the medicine for is really bad because I've been hobbling around on it for so long. So that's where I'm at. So, so catch me up um, for people that maybe just saw the video. I, I just saw the video like everyone else. Um, can you give us a little bit more context and a little bit more background? You said you injured yeah. yourself during a professional. I have rep. a bunch. Of, I got like six other videos I can send over to if you want to uh, put B-roll to the story. But yeah, last Saturday, the 28th, I pro wrestled in Sacramento and came down with the flying elbow, drop off the top rope, done the move hundreds of times and like charged something in my back. But one thing I noticed right afterwards, my wrist stung a lot. You know, I thought my hip was a little sore, but my wrist stung a lot. We were the last match. So I went back, showered and just crashed out. And then I woke up in the morning to not being able to move. So that Sunday, that night, I fly back to Vegas. Uh, next day, I call Dr. Sanders' office. He's a UFC doctor. I've been seeing him since 04. We have a really good relationship. I break anything, I go to him, I get an x-rayed or an order for my MRI and uh, I, I don't go to the ER. And that's how we've been doing things. And he's been seeing me this long. So he knows everything I'm taking, been taken. I've never had a problem getting a prescription filled from him before. So I'm like, man, you know, like my medicines are already accounted for, for my hip and my knee. And plus, like, I don't want to run out of them. Like I want to see Dr. Sanders and get another script so I could make it through this. So I do that. We take x-rays. Uh, he gets cast my wrist. He gives me the results of the diagnosis of the back x-ray, which is a cracked verte lumbar vertebrae and uh, sends me on my way to the, the pharmacy with a prescription of um, Vicodin 7.5 milligrams, even a little stronger than my pills and tramadol, which are pretty weak, but uh, well, in conjunction with something else that they work better. So I wasn't upset. I was happy. Tried to get him to fill up his CVS and the pharmacist refused to fill him. So we're going to have to verify it with your doctor. I'm like, well, I've seen him like 17 years. I've never had this problem. So he's not going to say no or anything. And uh, next day when I tried to pick him up, they said, no, no, they wouldn't fill him. Like, no, we need authorization. Well, you said you were getting authorization yesterday. Are you sure you got authorization? I think so. Well, I can get authorization. I'll try to pick him up again tomorrow. So next day still couldn't pick him up and now it's like oh my god like i gotta figure something out here i'm dying so i'm like screw it every time i've checked myself in the er with an injury they'll at least throw me in a bed throw like a iv painkiller or something in me to get the pain down and send me on my way with like a 30-day script or some like oral medication and uh this time I, I get there nice and early before rush hour because i know everyone's di dying of covid vaccines so I get there before the rush comes in and the doctor calls me back. I wait my 45 minutes, like a gen. And keep in mind, I get to the hospital in the morning. No one's there. And I crutch from the parking lot to the freaking door. And everyone sees me do this. It takes me forever. I can barely move. No one offers to help. No one brings a wheelchair out. I get to the front and the lady's like, we didn't have any wheelchairs, but we got one now if you want some. I'm too late now if I'm here. So I went and checked in and, and uh, just wanted to wait in the little corner where I didn't have to move. And I did that. Finally, the doctor calls me back. He says, what are you here for? And I tell him the exact story about the, the 10 milligram prescription I get every month about Dr. Sanders and our relationship about the 7.5 milligram Vicodins. He wrote me and CVS not letting me pick it up. And, uh, and he said, so you're here for pain management. And I go, yes, yes, I am. And he goes, all right, well, have you been vaccinated? And I'm like, no, like I'm <laughs> You know, what does that have anything to do with this, man? Like, I need treatment for pain. Like, no, I haven't been vaccinated, but that shouldn't matter to me. I've, I've never been sick with COVID anyway. So they wouldn't uh, see me. He goes, all right, well, wait back outside on the other side of that gate. And I'm like, well, that's the waiting room. I've just been waiting there. What, you're not going to see me? He goes, just wait there. And I sat there for hours. And when I got finally got it, they're not going to see me. They're just giving me a run. Now the, the rooms are getting full. Now, like... Literally at least a hundred people have went in there back there after me, you know, that would came after me as well. And finally I called the doctor. I'm like, I'm like, doctor, are you going to see me? You know? And he's like, you know, like, no, we have more important like 
cases. We got people dying here. And I'm like, well, I didn't take the stupid vaccine. I shouldn't have to get punished because of that, you know? So you have people dying of the vaccine. He's like, uh, got really mad about that and started getting snarky with me and then ended up, you know, saying I got to leave. And then this next thing you know, the security's all around me. And I'm like, fine, I'll leave, I'll leave. And I'm like trying to leave on my own, but I'm not crutching fast enough with a broken wrist and a b- broken vertebrae. So when the security starts nudging me from behind, he caught me off guard and I fell forward and I lose my balance and I go down and I have to plant my right hand out to, to save myself. And in doing that, like I popped my, I, something hurt in my shoulder. Like it was abrupt and I was really angry. I'm like, what are you doing to me, man? I got a broken back and you're pushing me. And I'm really mad. And I like just wanted to clear some room and I swung my crutch a couple of times back and forth just to clear it out. And they did because they were all trying to, swore me like they're trying to about to tackle me or something arrest me i'm like you realize you got tackle and cuff a guy with a broken back like and a broken wrist like how the fuck you're gonna kill me you know and then i'm like well I, that freaked me out though because i'm like geez you know like swinging the crutch like that they might just shoot me so my only option i thought i could do is i saw open bathroom door and i scurried in there and locked it and i just like broke down i didn't know what to do and i'm like all right well i'm gonna have to document some of this no one's gonna believe me so i'm gonna open this door and make a little video. They're going to think I'm trying to leave, but really it's, I'm going to pretend to leave and then pull back and make a little video and document it, lock the door again, then muster up my strength and, and go. So that first video you saw of me talking to the, the staff and the doctors was that. I got open the door. I, I talk my, I say my piece to them and I shut the door again, lock it, get the phone recorded again, put it back in my pocket. And now I'm on my way out. So this time I get outside, I knew the cops would be there. Of course they were going to call the cops. Sure enough, the cops are there. Now I got to deal with them. That's the second video you saw. They actually kept the word. I was worried. I'm like, you guys are going to just pull me over and arrest me. And he's, no, we're not. We just want you to get out of here. You know, and it's not going to arrest you. You didn't break any laws. So I'm like, all right, well. So gonna... you weren't arrested. You, you, you went home yourself. Yeah. Yeah. They never arrested me. They never arrested me. They and just to word. clarify, your the reason why you were low on medication was you had you were taking it for two different conditions, two different injuries. That's well, why I mean, right. kind of three. I have a really arthritic knee that's had surgery on five times and needs a total replacement. A real arthritic hip that's arthritic, no surgeries yet, but I'm told needs a replacement soon. And then I have a neck that gives me a little trouble too. So that's why I get prescribed those 10 milligrams three times a day, in case you're wondering. And I'm a few months into the script now, and now I freaking get two new severe injuries that 10 milligrams three times a day aren't going to fucking touch. I mean, that, that prescription is for like, uh, like mild chronic pain, not really, really super chronic acute pain, which is what I'm suffering. So, I mean, I don't know what else to do, man. I, I, I like tried to conserve them as much as possible. And I put, took more than I should. And, you know, like pretty soon those ran out. And uh, here we are, man, uh, another week later. And really like the day I went before the end of the ER, all right, I, I got a little message from God. And you kid, don't have to be religious and think I'm a quack or anything. I don't care about any of that. But he did. He sent me a message. And you know what the message was? Mm-hmm. And I, this was, I didn't have no idea all this stuff was going to happen. He goes, tell the truth for 24 hours. And it's an experiment in truth. One day, tell the truth. And I'm like, okay, I could do that. And that's literally exactly what I did. And here's where I'm at. Like, it's been a nightmare. And you know why? Because the truth goes against the narrative, you know? So, I'm sorry, what, what is the truth? Like, what is the truth that you told? The story me? that I told you, that they okay. they refuse me service because they think I'm um, um, recovering alcoholic looking for a buzz. That's honestly... You know, the people knew why I were in there. They knew I was this fighter. They knew I had a lot of trauma to the body. But, you know, they also probably knew I got that DUI on TMZ three years ago, three and a half years ago, which prompted me to totally quit drinking. I've been sober ever since. So um, that's where I'm at in my life. And um, they didn't have my account. Like, I was still able to, right afterwards, like, I posted those videos. I was still able to go out and comment in my accounts. And not too long later, I get a call from uh, the owner of Hytiva. That's the company I work for, Hytiva.com, Cannabis on Demand. He wanted me to pull the videos down. And I said, no problem. So I went back in to pull them down. Now I can't get back in my account. It's like my account's been scrubbed. All those, you could still see those videos and they're still playing those videos because they did really well. They got like 10,000 views the first day. 
So they let those run for a while while I couldn't remove them. I couldn't do anything. I'm locked out of my account. And now that they got all the views I wanted for, now they totally erased my account and I'm just wiped on social media. Why do you think that is? Why do you think Instagram would feel they got to shut me up and silence me and remove me from social media for telling the truth? Really? That's very retaliatory from your perspective. Yeah. I mean, what did I do? Did I really violate their principles that long? Can't tell the truth about getting screwed over at the emergency room? Like, come on. Have you talked to your doctor, your your primary care doctor since all th- this episode? Um, who, Dr. Sanders? I don't know. Yeah. He, I, I know I, I haven't. I mean, it was so much more, everything's harder. It takes me. And so I, I used to be able to get up, drive myself around right after the, the injuries. Now, now my right shoulder is so bad. I can't lift this arm. I'm holding the phone in it, but ah, ah, I can't even lift an inch. That's me trying to lift it. So this is totally, no, I got to use this to pick stuff up now. The claw thing, because I can't use that arm now. And now that right knee is so swollen and like, it's way harder to get up, get down, walk, like, the pain's way worse. And the, the injury was originally almost two, a week and a half ago. So, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I just I mean, feel like it's, it's like, it's just bullshit. And really, it's being persecuted for telling the truth that went against the narrative. Well, what do you plan to do from here? I got some friends looking to, you know, come by with like my one buddy sending me some Kratom. It's a legal herb that helps with pain. You know, another buddy's bringing some things by. So I got some people helping me. Really? I don't know, man. I don't know what to do from here. I don't want to go and go through this again and get in the car and go to the hospital and wait and get rejected. So I just don't know what to do. And that's, you know, I don't know. How long have you been using pain medication? My God. I mean, like, Probably I've, I've had 10 surgeries and broke over 20 bones. So usually you get a, a strip for each time you get an acute injury. That's how it works. Uh, and that's how it's worked the rest of my life. But somehow a fractured lumbar vertebrae uh, doesn't count. Is it not working as well as it used to? Like when? No, it does. Only- the 10 milligrams work for my, my knee and hip pain. It worked mm-hmm. fine. They last me the month. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but no, that same 10 milligram dose that's helping my knee and hip out, they're doing nothing for my fractured vertebrae, nothing for my freshly fractured wrist. That's the truth. Hmm. Um, I did you... the first couple of days when I was able to take a couple to deal with it, hmm. but they're all gone. Have you seen the reaction to your videos? No, I can't get online. Okay. What? Why not? I, they Instagram banned me. They wiped my account. Well, I mean, like for t- Twitter, or, you know, just, you know, anything. No, I, like I went to Instagram and I was, I was in the process of commenting back on, commenting back on some of the contents. And they're the most comments I ever got, thousands of them. And I got just, I just started probably about 10 deep. And I was, everything I said was the truth, but it went against the narrative. And next thing you know, like I went to delete those videos and oh my God, I'm locked out. What? Yeah. They, they wipe my account. You can't even see my posts now. And that they milk them for views. The beauty of this is I have a bunch more videos. I can send you like five, six videos that corroborate every year word of the story, you know, and, and, and tell that I'm telling the truth. And they just think if I'm silenced, then no one's going to know anyone. Well, I think, um, you know, I, I read some of the, the comments to your to your videos. I've seen a whole lot of people on YouTube. I've seen profession, uh, you know, some of your colleagues, Diego. Um, everyone seems to be very concerned for you. And yeah, now- well, I need help, you know. I'm worried about you. Well, it's not too helpful right now. If you think you're my friend and you think sitting there worried about me because you think I have a drug problem, is going to fix it. Like, that's fuck off then. That's why I've been, I've been being rude to people. You know, I'm honest with them and they shit on me. I'm like, well, fuck off. Don't help me. Like, I told you, everyone could help you in a different way. If someone, how could I help? How could I help? And you give them a few things. And they go, no, but I could, uh, you come give you a ride. Well, I don't need a ride now. Well, you don't want my help. Well, you're an asshole. Like, well, I don't need a ride. Like, I need these other things. So fuck off. That's how I've been. I mean, there's, there's only one way to ask this. So do, do you have a problem with prescription drugs? 
Are you fucking kidding me? Let's let me fucking fracture your l- lumbar vertebrae and see how you feel two weeks later, and also break your wrist and also fuck your shoulder up, and you're crunching around on it. Like, come on, man. Like, really, I'm being honest here. Do you have a problem? Fuck you. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I mean, that's that's been most of the response. Dude, I've been here a reading. bunch of AA and sponsors and treatment and all the works of it. Like, I first started drinking, like, probably, like, seven years ago and finally fully quit three and a half. So Yeah, four said you were sober. That. Yeah, and, oh, I do have my medical marijuana card. Like, sure. and I can have my little vape pen, but that's legal. And that it can only offer so much relief, you know? Like, it's not, like, the same relief as some of these other medications could offer. Yeah. I mean, I think everyone's just really concerned with you, and I know that that's not enough for you. I mean, no, they're concerned because they right don't now. believe me, and they think I'm scoring, trying to score some pills because right. I used to be a fucking drunk. That's the truth. And if you don't realize that, then you know, smell you later. So, what is the solution here? I mean, you don't like, believe me? Watch these six videos in the you know, like order I send them, and like there's a bunch more proof that's already in the can. So I don't know what more you can ask. I still what? don't believe him. He just doesn't seem to. I'm like, I don't care if you believe me. I'm telling the truth, you know? So I made a commitment for truth for one day, right? And I've extended that because after that one day, wow, did things get a lot worse. So I have to think there's a silver lining. Things got worse because generally people stop. You, you were telling the truth and people stop believing you. That's yeah. that's a. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Instead of trying to hide the doc that I'm getting anything or score a legal opiate like you know or something like no i've been trying to go buy the book and do everything legal you don't think like i could it's vegas man if i wanted some heroin i could score some like dude like, i'm trying not to do that i'm trying to fucking like go by the book here and and i've been striking out and no one's been helping have you reached out to the ufc they know about this if they wanted to help me they could easily help me no i'm not gonna go Hey, make you throw me a bone? I don't need a bone. I need one like doctor's office visit, really, that someone will work with me and a pharmacist too. What's your pain level right now? It was 10 of 10 the day after I broke it, almost a week and a half ago. And it's way worse. So I don't know what you call that. Well, um, you said you have some uh, friend coming over to give you some kratom. I mean, that seems like a short-term solution. Is what's the? What's I'm the, trying to buy some time. I'm trying to get it so I can get up a little easier. Like sure. I don't know what else to do, man. I had some kratom. I didn't think I needed to make another run and go get it. You know, like, and then go just find another doctor. Not even illegal, like you know. So, mm-hmm. but no, I didn't think I, you know, need. I just had some to help me hold me over, and now like I, it's much harder to go get it. So I'm out. I'm out of all my other meds. I'm out of the tramadol. I'm out of the 10 milligram oxy. I mean, never got the the seven and a half in it. So that's what I mean. When when you get the crate, I mean, is it just a matter of finding another doctor, somebody that will write you another script? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the solution is. I have some friends working on it right now, reaching out to some doctors and stuff. So, you know. You know, some people are trying to help and pitch in where they can, and uh, that's where I'm at. And like, yeah, I have uh, my owner of IT was working on getting me in with the doc today, so we're gonna see how that goes. Are they gonna go in and uh, you know take a look at your? I mean, it seems like there's there's two issues here. There's the, there's the immediate injury, and there's the longer term you know issue of uh, of the medications that you need to take to to feel normal, right? no not really like i'm really low dose for a long time I and mean, that's not even enough to give you a draw or anything you know that's no big deal that's it's really it's never been a big deal before since like i just started getting these so that's really the issue if you don't understand that i don't know what to tell you you know people abuse opiates so they think I'm automatically assume anyone who's in there is trying to uh, fake the pain and milk it for some sympathy so they could get some well, that's not me. I don't know if you've seen me fight all those years. Have I ever looked like a pussy fake and stuff? I don't think no. so. Not at all. I don't think anybody is calling. I mean, I, that's not the the sentiment that I've read or seen out there. Well, Everyone is just super concerned for you. Sent, okay. 
that and that you don't believe me that I just have a drug problem and alcohol problem. What's that? That's a message that's being sent to me that people don't believe me and they just think I'm trying to score pills. Because they take a look at all these different pieces. They take a look at, you know, that what well, they, they know they about two videos and that old they, and they take that old DUI arrest, really. I mean, I got a bunch more I could send. Like, there's only two. Those I had to get those two up to ensure that I made it out of the hospital without going to jail. That's why I had to post those. Sorry, I did. Yeah.